In this section, these general items will be covered. Tools, water hookup, drain requirements, electrical requirements, leveling, and location. Some basic tools will be required for installing any washer. There are a number of items to consider when determining the proper location for a front load washer. Access to hot and cold water faucets, drain, and a 120 volt polarized grounded outlet are required. The water heater should be set to deliver 120 degrees Fahrenheit water. The floor plays a very important role in front load washers. These washers are much heavier and spin at a faster rate than standard washers. The floor must be sturdy and solid. When the washer is loaded with clothing and water, it can weigh approximately 400 pounds. Most installation guides will list the washer dimensions and clearance requirements for the sides, back, top, and front of the machine if the washer is to be installed in a closet. Do not operate the washer in temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. Some water can remain in the washer and can cause damage in low temperatures. The drain hose may be pre-attached to the machine. It could be looped on the back or stored within the cabinet. The drain hose can be installed using the standpipe drain system, the laundry tub system, or the floor drain system. The standpipe drain requires a minimum diameter standpipe of 2 inches and a carryaway capacity of no less than 17 gallons per minute. For this front load washer, the top of the standpipe must be at least 30 inches high and no higher than 96 inches from the bottom of the washer. No more than 8 inches of the drain hose should be extended into the pipe. The laundry tub needs a minimum of 20 gallon capacity. The top of the laundry tub must be 30 inches from the floor. If a floor drain system is used, a siphon brake must be used. This must be installed even with the top of the machine. It is extremely important that all electrical requirements that are included in the installation manual be followed. A 120 volt AC polarized and grounded outlet should be used. It is recommended that this outlet be on a separate circuit breaker or time delay fuse. Some locations require a GFCI outlet if the outlet is close to water. GFCI is a ground fault circuit interrupter. This is an outlet with an internal circuit breaker that trips if a problem arises. All washers are packaged to prevent damage during transportation. These shipping materials must be removed for the machine to operate correctly. These shipping materials may be bolts, or styrofoam plugs, or some other type of stabilizer or combination of items. Any of these shipping materials should be removed when the washer is within three feet of its final location to avoid internal damage. New hoses come with most new machines. These new washer hoses may be color-coded. The red hose should be connected to the hot water faucet and the H indicator on the back of the machine. The blue hose should be connected to the cold water faucet and the C indicator on the back of the machine. Generally, the process should be to hand tighten the hoses, then use pliers to tighten the couplings an additional two-thirds turn. Do not over tighten to prevent damage to the plastic water valve on the machine. Turn on the water and check for leaks around the faucets and inlet hoses. It is very important that the drain hose be installed correctly to avoid water leakage and or floor damage. Many washers are shipped with a hose, drain hose hook, and a tie-down strap. The drain hose needs to be installed into the drain hose hook. The hook should be placed into the standpipe. No more than 8 inches of drain hose should be extended into the drain pipe. To prevent the hose from coming out of the drain during pump-out, a tie-down strap should be used to secure the hose. Regardless of standpipe or laundry tub, the hose needs to be secured. Properly leveling the machine avoids excessive noise and vibration. Check the levelness of the machine by placing a level on the top edge of the washer, first side to side,
than front to back. Make sure all four feet are stable and resting on the floor. After the washer is level, use an open-end wrench to turn the nuts on the feet tightly against the washer cabinet. All adjustable feet must be tightened. If the nuts are not tight against the washer cabinet, the washer may vibrate and move. Some washers may not have locking nuts and will just require the legs to be adjusted until level. The washer level should be checked once it is in its final location. To make sure the feet are properly adjusted, a quick spin test can be performed. Place a sheet of paper under each front leg. Create an unbalanced load by loading the washer with one heavy wet towel or one large item. Select spin, the fastest speed, and start the washer. Try to pull the paper from under the feet as the washer spins, during the slower speed and as it ramps up. If either paper can be pulled out, the leg needs to be readjusted. On this washer, the right leg is coming off of the floor, therefore it needs to be adjusted down. If the paper cannot be pulled out, the legs are properly adjusted. It is recommended by the manufacturer to run one complete cycle without clothing on new washers. Use one half the normal amount of HE detergent and select the normal cycle. Allow the washer to complete the cycle and check for proper operation. This initial cycle ensures the interior is clean before washing clothes. The washer is now ready for use. Always refer to the owner's manual of the appliance for specific model information. The owner's manual will have information that covers installation, operation, safety, maintenance, and warranties.